Thank you, gentlemen. Wow. Well, thank you for being here. I want you to turn to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, that is chapter 11. We have uh, sort of been excited about uh, our time with you again <coughs> and uh, appreciate your prayers and involvement. Next week, we start our uh, training camp, um, the intern thing, uh, the summer intern thing, where uh, we uh, take the interns and uh, they uh, minister during the summer and train. Uh, we have a training camp that kicks that off, and that's next week for us. So we have from 9 to, uh, to noon, we have three sessions in the morning. At night, we have, uh, we have uh, preaching. We uh, sing for about 20 minutes and then have a sermon, sing another 10 minutes and have another sermon. You guys are a bunch of wimps. <laughs> so we have all our guys will be in, so we have a wall-to-wall preaching, I'm telling you. So it's, uh, it's fun. So pray for us next week and uh, what God wants to do in uh, all of our lives. So thank you for this. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, we've been trying to deal with this and uh, do just a slight review to help us, but we want to move into uh, verse 14. And verse 14 is a very controversial verse in my mind, and I think in, uh, as I deal with scholars, there's so many opinions on verse 14. And it has something to do with uh, the whole wrap-up and final days and uh, end-time kind of stuff. And people ask me, uh, do you, what, what, what do you preach, uh, when do you preach on the uh, end times and uh, the second coming and all that, and I don't. Uh, do you have an opinion on it? Well, probably. Uh, but it's so far, it's so, my, my whole involvement in the uh, second coming and prophecy and all that is so, uh, what's the word, so unlike uh, the traditional that I'm afraid to express it. <laughs> so being the coward that I am, I keep still. Uh, Probably tonight will be the closest you'll hear anything of it. Uh, in verse 14, you're kind of forced to it. Uh, but he's vindicating the ministry of John the Baptist. We understand that. And as you move into uh, verse 11 in this vindication, he sets up this contrast that we have, of course, been dealing with all week uh, in relationship to John the Baptist. And it's those born of women over here and, of course, the kingdom of God. And everyone in the kingdom of God has been born of women, but something else has happened in their lives that has brought a nature change. And it is so radical again that we call it born again. We call it new creature stuff. We call it new species. We call them sons of God. We, uh, they are just radically, overwhelmingly different. They are not who they were. They're not people who are adapting to certain new ethical standards. They're not people who've taken up certain ceremonies. They are radically changed in their nature. That is an absolute essential ingredient in what we call the kingdom. And we have been discovering that the kingdom is not a location and the kingdom can't be God. It isn't just God made a kingdom and said, well, I'd like to have some people come and get in on it. It isn't that. It's that the kingdom is made up of God and man in this intimacy. And that is the kingdom. So it's in this intimate relationship, this nature of God and the nature and person of man literally being integrated together that you have this new thing called the kingdom. So God isn't this kingdom by himself and man can't be this kingdom by himself, but in that integration, the kingdom is established. And man and God have become one. Jesus was the first one to experience this, which is phenomenal. He's the first man in the kingdom. And he is the, uh, he is the one that God has used to literally die on a cross, come forth from the grave, and establish the possibility of us being in on it. Now, isn't Jesus God? Yes, he is. But he's become man, and he is filled with God. And in that merger, he's the prototype of what we are. So he's the only begotten of the Father in that sense, and we are the adopted sons of the Father brought in. And a whole kingdom of God and man in unity has been established. 
That is just a phenomenal concept, and that's what he's giving to us in verse 11. That means then that John the Baptist in the old structure, the old covenant, was the greatest because it was, it was a performance-oriented. It was a self-sourced. God was over there. I'm over here. I've got to do it. So I work hard, and I, I, I get myself on a level that you aren't. So some of you are number fives and some are on the first level, but I'm on a number 10 level because I pray more than you do and I preach more than you do and I read the Bible more than you do, so you should applaud because I'm so great. So here I am at a number 10. John the Baptist reached the peak of this and he was the greatest in this. But he says, whoa, over here in the kingdom, in this thing right here, this relationship in the kingdom between God and man, there's only one category and there's, it, they're all ones. We call it least. We're just least. Why? Because we can't pull this off. We proved that over here. So this is not on a performance, uh, performance basis. The whole thing has changed because it's relational, man. It's, it's intimacy. It's God and man in this. And since we're least, God literally supplies the entire source and resource. So how could you take credit for any of it? So the more least you are, the better you are. So if you say, I can't, oh, you're a candidate. I'm not able. Oh, you're in. Well, I'm not adequate. You're the one we're looking for. Oh, I can't possibly. Oh, you, we got to have you. See, there's no room for pride in this. Arrogance doesn't get into this. That's over here. Now, he's very strong in verse uh, 12 to say, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. So he says, the moment John the Baptist showed up and began to preach the kingdom, introduce, prepare, speak about the kingdom, and Jesus is on the scene, and the kingdom has arrived because Jesus and the Father are, have become one. The moment that showed up, this group over here who's so used to performance and so used to doing and so wrapped up in the law, they begin to press, which is the word violence. They begin to press this kingdom and say, oh, we want it, we want in. Well, how are you going to get in? We're going to take the Old Testament methodology of performance and self-sourcing and we'll do it and we'll get it done and we'll work hard and we'll discipline ourselves. We're going to take that and press on the kingdom and get in the kingdom by this methodology. And he says, when they did that, they became thieves, which is the, verb, the word force. They steal. They plunder. So they're a bunch of thieves. Well, I'm doing the best I can, you thief. Well, I'm working hard at it, you thief. You, you're a thief because you can't have the kingdom on that basis. That's not, that's not the methodology of the kingdom. What's the methodology of the kingdom? It's the least, and it's relational, and it's embrace, and it's seek, and I'm open, and I'm yours, and oh, it's you, and it's focus, and it's oh. See, that's the least stuff. This performance stuff, good night. What are you doing? You thief, quit it. You're trying to steal the kingdom. Then he moves you to this verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. He says, I'll tell you why they're thieves. The reason they're thieves, if they take this Old Testament methodology of pressing and doing and self-performance and aren't I great and I work harder than you do, if you take that and try to get into the kingdom with that, you're a thief. And the reason you're a thief is because all the law and the prophets, this whole system has been, is no more. That's verse 13. For the prophets and the law prophesied until John. In other words, when John showed up, that all went away. In other words, when Jesus came and the kingdom is announced by John, that thing is gone. Now, it isn't gone in the fact that we destroyed it. It isn't we took a sledgehammer and beat it to death. It isn't that we lit, uh, lit it under a, a fire under it and burned it and consumed it. It isn't that. It's been fulfilled in this. 